that in order for you to stay on the path that God has given you, in order for you to walk in the will of God, in order for you to, when God put you on the path, you've got to set your face. You've got to stay focused. And you can't allow anybody to get you off track. And if you read further down in this story, you can see what they, when they didn't make room for them, what the disciples wanted him to do. Call, can't you, we call down fire from heaven? Because they were upset. Yeah. This is a man of God that had been into Maryland. Do you know the story about the woman at the well? How she said, come see a man, spent three days in there, and they had a revival. And he needs to go back through there to get to Jerusalem, and they made no room for him. And I'm going to take you back when they said Elias. You know the story of Elias? Elias when when um, he was running away from Jezebel's husband, and he was on a mountain, and and they wanted him to come see the king. The king said, "I don't know, Jezebel, another king, husband Ahab, another one." But the king wanted him to come to him. They needed a word from God, but he wasn't coming to him. So he sent the men by the fifties and their captain, and they said, "Man of God, come down and see the king." He said, "If I be a man of God, let me call on." We 
give it to variation, am I right? Yes. Come on now, I'm going to something. Yes. Happy to be this one week. Happy two days out of the week. Some of y'all ain't have a whole year. A whole two years. You still worried about the past. You still worried about who did you wrong. You still worried because you don't have a place to stay. <laughs> Are you still worried because this ain't working out, that ain't working out. He does not want that from us. Do you know that's a sin? Yes. Hello? Yes. Worrying is a sin. If you love it with your mind, why are you worrying? You love that problem more than you love God. Because if you love God with the same mind you're worrying about, you will be using that mind to do what? To do what? I can't hear you. To what? To be worshiping. No more distractions. It's a tool of the enemy. It's a trick of the enemy. Somebody says something bad about you. It comes to you. You get hurt, of course. We have feelings. It happens. But then you're going to hold that person in your heart. Now your heart don't belong to God. Your heart belongs to the one who did you wrong. Do you see where I'm coming from with this? When you set your face to serve God, you don't let these things hinder you. Because these are tricks of the enemy to kill, steal, and destroy. He don't want your house. He don't want your car. He don't want your job. But he will use these things because what he wants is your soul. And your soul is what it's going to take for you to get into eternity. So when you say, I love God with all my mind, my heart, my soul, the enemy say, uh-huh, uh-huh, she do. So I'm going to find something to attack her mind or his mind. I'm going to find something for her to hold in her heart because now the heart is contaminated. It's polluted. And let me tell you one thing about a heart. Sometimes you don't even know your heart is contaminated because you're so fixated in that thing, you justified it because somebody did you wrong and you think it's okay to hate on them. I got news for you. Hatred is a sin too. You think it's okay to not forgive them. Unforgiveness is a sin. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go.
This is how you can repent. And let me tell you, the enemy will use the closest thing to you. Now, you know if your job is your livelihood. And you bring home some money to take care of some big things. And the enemy attacks your job. Some of us get real weak then. Because that goes to show you that we were trusting in the job more than we were trusting in God. And I had to tell one of my co-workers, I said, wait a minute here, where's your trust? You got to trust God because right now it sounds like to me you trust this job more than you trust God. Because if God, let's say if God decides to fight for you and they let you go anywhere, he's going to take care of you. It angers God when we don't trust him. Amen. Because he's God. The true and living God.
If somebody tell me to clean the toilets in the church, I clean the toilets. Guess what? I do. I'm not too high for that. I sweep floors. But since she be helping the food bank, I come out here and I pack food if I have to. You tell me to need to ride the church, I'll pick you up. I ain't too high for nobody. And one thing I haven't done, a lot of us shift responsibilities. If you call me and you say you need such and such, if I don't have it, I'll try to get it. Because I know this is what it takes to be a pastor. And guess what? Jesus was a servant. He didn't have a home. He was homeless. You read it. Their foxes have what holes? Birds of the air have nests for the son of man have what? And then they wanted to bring him into Samaria so he could get to Jerusalem. Can you imagine that? You going up for your crucifixion. And 
it's much more because the word of God tells us that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard. Neither has it entered to the heart. And I'm pretty sure they get into a lot of hearts of man, because some people still think you're going to be flying around here like beings, whatever that is. I want to know one thing. If I'm going to be flying around like beings, why is he building a mansion? Why the streets paved with gold for, them to, for me to walk on? Huh? It has not entered to the house of me. A lot of people have it. So they feel like heaven is a place where it's not as good. Let me tell you something. God is a creator. If earth looks good to you, imagine what heaven looks like. And this is what you should be saying, you focus on. Jesus was focused. And he knew that after he did the will of the Father, he was going back to heaven to sit at the right hand of God. What do we want from God? I ask you this question today. What do you want from God? Do you want the riches here on earth? Or do you want unlimitedness what he has for you in heaven? Do you want to seek him first in his righteousness in the kingdom of God while you're here on earth so he can let everything else be added to you? He said, I've never seen the righteousness in hey. So that tells me I've got to live righteously. Yes. Living righteously is living holy. Living righteously is living sinless because sin stinks in the knowledge of God. And even when you do sin, you got to ask for forgiveness because he knows when you're born into sin. But that's no excuse to sin. Absolutely. Absolutely. He wants us to be separated from the world. Be in this world, but not what? Of this world. So I ask you this question. What are you looking for? I live for God. Yes, I live to see my maker in heaven. I live to see Jesus face to face in the day. So I'm not going to be distracted by the trials, the tribulations, the snares, or whatever the enemy throws my way. I'm going to brush it off. Have I heard that? Just brush it off. That's like, brush it off, keep it going, do like Jesus do, set your face, and look towards the prize. Nothing separate me from God. No trial. No tribulation. Nothing. No heartache. No pain. No suffering. No job. Let nothing separate me. I want to encourage you today. If you're on that path, and if God has put you on that path, stay on the path and set your face like Jesus did. Do the will of God to the end. Because we know the rest of the story. Jesus did go to Jerusalem. And when he went there, he was really true. He was called everything but the Son of God. He was beaten. He was fed on. Thorns was placed on his head. Pierced in his head. He was whooped. He was beaten. Yes. But he set his face. Because that hour had came. It was his hour to be crucified. And slain for you. Are you going to appreciate what he did for you and live for him and not be distracted? I ask that you take this message today. Let it penetrate in your heart. Go home and meditate and say, God, show me me. Show me all my sharp falls so I can please you. And when I fall short, straighten me out. Even send somebody to me if I can't see myself. I tell them to send whomever. His angels, his messengers, prophet. I listen. And I know if you're a man or a woman of God. That says he will confirm in my spirit. Stay focused. That's all I'm asking. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.